Well, we're coming up to exam review season. If you're not already in it, um, you should be getting into that mode soon, at least four weeks uh, before the exam. So you can consider the month of November is going to be a, a review month. And I'm sure that many of you have been uh, looking through YouTube and looking online for um, review strategy tips. How can I shave some time off of this? Or is there an easier way to do that? Listen, um, here's the reality of, of, this, of this game. Uh, learning has been the same uh, for 5,000 years. Nothing has changed. Uh, we, think, we, we think things have changed. We think we're more enlightened today. Uh, there's a host of papers in, in uh, academic journals, in, in education studies, that point to learning styles. All oh, people have learning styles, and you have to appeal to their learning style, and they'll learn better. Some are auditory learners. Some are visual learners. Some are interactive learners. Um, so I'm going to get uh, just a little bit crude here. Bullshit. That's all, that's all BS. It's all BS. Not one study uh, uh, has, been, has been published that can verify that delivering education to a particular learning style results in better outcomes. Oh, you might have a preference to learning a particular way. You might prefer to be in a classroom with other people and interact. Others might prefer to sit at, at a computer and just watch video on their own time. Others may prefer just to read the book and, and do it themselves. Others may prefer just to have somebody saying it to them in, in an auditory way so that they learn. You may prefer that method of delivery. But that doesn't mean that you'll perform better receiving um, your learning in that particular style. There is one variable and only one big fat variable that correlates almost exclusively with performance. One variable, and I'll write it on the screen so that you know it. Time. Putting in the time. And it's been that way for 5,000 years. Nothing has changed. So no matter how fancy everything sounds, visual learner, auditory learner, it's all about putting in the time, period. So um, how do we put in the time? Uh, number one, here are the tools that you have available to you. Review videos. You're, you're going to want to use review videos. It's time to leave the main videos. Uh, if you haven't gotten through all the main videos, maybe give yourself another week. But once November 1st happens on the calendar, consider those videos deleted. Uh, I'm not deleting them, but consider them deleted. And you're going to want to stay with the playlist that, that has all the review videos, and that's it. Um, so on YouTube, you'll find uh, all the review videos for every reading in Quant, FRA, Fixed Income, Portfolio Management, and Equity. Uh, on my site, you'll find these as well, plus corporate finance, economics, and derivatives and alternative investments. These are not available on YouTube, just on my site. Um, corporate finance has six readings. Uh, they're all up. Economics uh, has seven readings. It's broken down into two and five. The five, the um, last five readings are macro. Those are all done. The first two are micro. I'm doing those now. And then derivatives and alternative investments, there's three here and one here uh, for a total of four. Uh, they'll be done by this time next week. So we're going into the final week of October. I said I would be done all the review videos by the end of October so that you have them for November. And they will be done. Uh, so if you're looking for corporate finance economics in these, you're not going to find them on YouTube. They're on my site. Uh, if you go there uh, and click on uh, level one, subscribe to level one, there is an option. There is still a free option. Uh, it expires December 3rd. So when you um, subscribe there on December 3rd, it just ends. But I just didn't want anybody paying just for a couple of weeks and just for, for some review videos. I would have I felt bad about that. So I just said, look, let's open a free section right there for, for latecomers. They're always latecomers. Um, so there you go. Use those. Here's how they're structured. The first 15 to 20 minutes. Wow, that's a terrible color there. Let's get a better one. The first 15 to 25 minutes, I should say, uh, is a review of the main parts of the reading. So if the reading was an hour and a half of video long, um, the review is only 15 to 25 minutes. Now, in, in the main um, video, uh, I do it to get to understanding so that you get to understanding everything. I see what's going on. I get it. Um, there are ways to make these videos shorter. I can pass on understanding in all of the examples, and I can just say, look, here's how this works. Here's how that works. Here's how this formula works. There you go. You need to know that. Let's move on. Well, that, that might get you um, through level one, uh, sometimes effectively, because you're getting just what you need to know to pass that exam. 
here's the trap. And anyone who's ever played billiards or pool uh, uh, understands this. You never play the shot that you're on. You always play your next shot. So whatever shot you're going to take, you have to think, where do I want the white ball to end up so that my next shot is lined up? You always play the second shot. Always. Um, it's the same thing here uh, for level one. Yeah, it'll get you through level one, but guess what? you got level two staring you in the face. And level two... Uh, relies on an understanding of level one, not a familiarity with level one, an understanding of level one, which is why level two is considered one of the more difficult levels, is because you can get through level one with a familiarity. And then when you hit level two, it's, well, what does this mean? Why are we doing that? What does that mean? Well, that was all covered in level one. So my videos are for understanding, yeah, and they're, they're a little longer than they need to be, because I'm really setting you up for level two here. The review videos condense it down to 15 to 25 minutes. If you have not watched the main videos and you're just relying on the review videos, that might get you through. But when you get to level two, you're going to say, I didn't learn anything in level one, clearly. Well, that wasn't the point of the review videos. I'm taking some time stressing that because I want to be clear here. This will get you through. Uh, but it doesn't set you up well for level two, all right? So while the main video might be an hour and a half, the review videos are 15 to 25 minutes, and then I follow them up with this. Probably uh, anywhere from 45 minutes <clears throat> to an hour of the end of chapter questions, and I walk through each one of them. Uh, so here's my, uh, here's my advice on how to use the review videos, is watch the main review, and then when the first question appears on the screen, there's that little pause button down there, hit the pause button, solve the question and then play and then watch the walkthrough. As soon as the next question appears, hit the pause button. Solve the question on the screen and then hit play and watch my uh, walkthrough. And just keep doing that. And you'll get understanding even if you watch it at 1.5 times speed. Uh, there's no point in sitting for 25 minutes when you can cut that down to 18 minutes or 17 minutes by watching it at one and a half times speed, right? Quant FRA fixed income portfolio equity all on YouTube. On markmelner.com you have these. Secondly, you, you still have a whole bunch of end of chapter questions yourself that you can do. And you might be saying, but if you're doing the walkthrough, aren't you really just covering off the same thing? Ah, yes and no. Um, I can't just print questions on the screen um, at my discretion. I got to pay for that. That's called a copyright. And I pay for a copyright. But in the copyright agreement is the list of the content that you will use. Um, as new questions appear at the end of the chapter, I can't just throw them in there without renegotiating that copyright agreement and sticking those questions in. So my thinking is this. Look, you have a lot of good examples that I use, a lot. At the end of each reading, I cover anywhere from 20, 30, 40 questions. Across all the readings, I probably do anywhere from 1,800 to 2,000 question walkthroughs. So I don't cover them all. Well, good. Now you've got some that you can attempt on your own without uh, um, my prompting. Without my help, you can attempt them on your own and give them a try. All the answers are in the book. Bonk exams. From wherever you get them, they are important to do because the questions are written closer to exam style. Uh, a lot of the end of chapter questions are they're multi-stage problems. Some of them are multi-stage problems. Some are way uh, uh, require way more hand calculator work and and, uh, and formula work than you'd ever get on a real question. But again, it's reaching for that understanding, not just familiarity. Um, the mock exams are structured more like uh, the real the real exam questions, um, and in the proper weighting. Uh, that you'd get on an exam. And it's important to go through a mock exam because you want to see if you can go from topic to topic to topic to topic without watching the review and then doing the questions immediately after. That's kind of an unfair test of whether you know it or not, is to read a paragraph and then look at two questions and answer the two questions, go, oh, I got them right, I must know it. Listen, all you've done is at that point is put, put all, that, all that information in short-term memory and you immediately used it. Uh, Short-term memory has a very fast decay rate, a very fast decay rate. So when you're going through the, the reading for the first time, and then you immediately do some questions at the end, you're going to score pretty well because everything's in short-term memory. But a week later, give it a try. All that short-term memory decays. That's why review is extremely important, because you begin the process of moving all of that from short-term memory to long-term memory. And the only way you do that is by actually doing it, by actually doing stuff putting in the time. Nothing has changed uh, in, in human anatomy 
in, in neurophysiology for 5,000 years. Learning has been the same as it's always been. We may know more stuff, but we don't know it in any better way than we've always known it. So it's doing, doing, doing. Um, now here's where we can get some strategy in is, well, how do I prioritize? What do I focus on? Uh, I don't have time. Um, I really want to get past this. Uh, and, and how do I do it? What strategy do I follow? Okay, well, there are two, two ways to think about this. This is the most popular way right here is to say, well, look, quant, FRA, and ethics, they make up 47% of the exam. You really need to focus here. You got you to gotta slam these sections because that's almost half the exam in, in three sections. Uh, fixed income, economics, and equity, that's 30%. Together, these six sections make up 77%. Then you have the smaller sections, corporate finance, portfolio management, derivatives, alternative investments. And the thinking is you cannot ignore this. You should and must pay attention to this. If you have to let something go, let these things go. If you just are pressed for time, let these things go. And that sounds logical. This is 47%, this is 30%, and these are small sections. However, quant is eight readings. FRA is 13 readings. So there's 21 readings right there. Uh, ethics is five readings, so you got 26 readings. You got fixed income, you got six readings in there. Economics, you have seven readings. Equity, you have, I believe, five or six. Uh, alternative investments, you got one. You got one reading worth 4%. You can master that in a night. And there's 4% down. So, yeah, you could look at the big sections, but you got to think, hang on a second. It's 47% of the exam, but it's also 47% of the content. So, I'm, you know, you're not really giving me anything important here. Sure, it's got heavy weighting, but it represents that much of the content to begin with. So, um, I've done this over here, is I've taken each reading... Uh, and I, uh, or each section, and I said, well, you know, if quant is 12%, what is it worth per reading? Because there's eight readings in there. What is it worth per reading? And then I rank them. Uh, look what shows up as number one. Alternative investments. Pays the biggest dividend. One reading, 4%. No other section uh, has a reading that pays that much. So again, if you think about this as time is your asset, and you're going, or time is money, and you're going to invest your money in particular securities, which one do you want? You'd want the one that pays the biggest dividend. Alternative investments, 4%. So, you know, the thinking of you can let these small ones go, when I look at it this way, I think, well, I wouldn't let alternative investments go. It's one reading, I can get that out of the way tonight, and there's 4%. I'm going to grab it. I mean, that's four easy percent, because this is not a challenging reading at all, at all. So you should be able to slam that 4% easy. Uh, ethics, 3% per reading. Five readings, 3%. And that's not really true. Ethics is probably worth a lot more simply because the code and standards is one reading. Uh, it's a long one, though. But I'd say of the um, 36 questions, or sorry, the uh, 18 and 18, 36 questions you're going to get, I'd say anywhere from 33 to 34 are going to be purely on the code and standards. Purely. So that's one reading. So you can take this and say, well, that one reading is worth 15%. Suddenly, two readings out of 58, two readings out of the 58, and you're at 19%. So for me, for prioritizing, I would say, look, um, that's where I'm going to focus. I'm going to make sure I get those. Equity pays 1.67% per reading, same with fixed income. Derivatives, 1.67. Notice derivatives is down here being the one that you can let go. However, uh, it's tied with fixed income and equity as paying the most per reading. Look what's at the bottom here, corporate finance, which makes sense down here, and portfolio management, which makes sense. So these down here, yeah, if you have to let something go, I totally agree with corporate finance and portfolio management because it's consistent with this approach and it's consistent with this approach. Corporate finance only pays 1.16% per reading, portfolio management 1.4 per reading. If you have a fairly good familiarity with corporate finance and portfolio management, listen, there's 12 readings altogether, right? 12 of the 58. For these ones, I would say, watch the review videos, try some, try some of the problems. If you score between 50 and 70% on these two sections, big deal. I mean, it, that's not going to sink you at all. It's not going to sink you. If you've got to let something go, those are the two sections you want to let go. And then you want to work your way up. If you're, if you're going through economics going, oh, this is just, I'm spending way too much time on this, let it go. 
let it go. Look for the 50 to 70% range. Look to know half of what's going on. You can get through in the 50 to 70% range. It's up here. I'd say all the way down to here, maybe uh, down to there. Those, those are really the ones that you want to start paying attention to. Uh, but economics, portfolio management, corporate finance, you take the seven readings on here. There's 19 readings where you could say, look, there's a third of the content that I'm just going to aim for 50% to 70% to get in the 50 to 70% range. I'm just going to aim for that. Those difficult concepts, the stuff where I have to really stop and think, I'm going to let it go. I'm just going to let it go. And, 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 and if I have to, I'll guess on those. Again, I'm not advocating that you do that. I'm saying if you got to let something go, if you got six more hours left to study, it should be focused up here and let these things go down here, even if they're weak let them go because they're just such a small amount so i'd let them go from you know corporate finance portfolio management and then look at this we always say well look quant and fra but if you look at where quant and fra is they're way down here alternative investments ethics equity fixed income derivatives rank a lot higher than fra and quant now you can get fra a little bit higher up this list uh, four study sessions 13 13 readings however study session one and study session four aren't very useful. The middle two study sessions are very useful. That's eight readings. Understanding income statements, understanding balance sheets, uh, cash flow statements, and then it's uh, the non-current uh, uh, non -current liabilities. Uh, uh, what is it? Uh, you also have inventories, uh, uh, fixed assets, and uh, taxes. Those eight readings, that's the big, big bulk of, of FRA. The others, just have a familiarity with them. It's enough just to go through the review videos, try the end of chapter questions to say, okay, I'm familiar with it. There's nothing challenging in those two study sessions. It's the middle two. So if you take a FRA uh, and you divide it by uh, eight instead of 13, this probably moves up to about the third place. Alternative investments, one reading in ethics, uh, those eight readings in FRA, and then work your way down. Um, I find that this is probably going to be a better way because it's all about getting points on the exam. What pays the most points for the effort that you're putting in? Being that you have a limited amount of time, how do you want to allocate your time among the different asset classes? Hey, look at that. huh? Uh, alternative investments? I tell you, uh, you can't argue with that. Ethics? That's nice. Now, for ethics, what's going to help you out here? Um, is I have, uh, if you bought the ethics video notes, you're going to get a podcast, a zip. It's podcast.zip. You unzip it, and it has the entire code and standards on audio. Um, so rather than sitting there and looking at the screen uh, and, and watching the video, it is the audio from the video. I've stripped the audio out of the video and included in uh, with, the, with the notes for ethics so that you, in your downtime, whether you're jogging, you're biking, you're at the gym, you're, you're, you're commuting, you're, you're at work and you're bored, whatever, wherever you happen to be, you can listen to the code and standards. And how you would listen to them is uh, you listen to it for two or three minutes, you put it on pause, and then you repeat to yourself what I just said. Just repeat it. That reinforcement of repeating it. Hearing it, it's not as good as actually hearing it and then repeating it. And repeat it like this, that you had to explain it to somebody else. So you listen to one of the uh, codes, and they're all broken down by uh, 1A, 1B, 1C, 1D, 2A, 2B, 2C. They're all broken down like that, so you can listen to each one independently. After you listen to one, um, press pause, and try to explain it to somebody else. It's that explanation to somebody else that helps you work it out in your head what you heard, and in explaining it to somebody else, it also clarifies to you what's being said. That's the most effective way to study ethics. Um, and honestly, for ethics, I really would, uh, I, I, I would almost leave that to the very last week, and here's why. Um, it's hard to internalize, because a lot of it is, it's detailed. Some of it doesn't, is not clear why something is unethical to begin with until it's really, really explained to you. So you're going to want to put it in short-term memory. Chances are it's going to be in short-term memory. And if you're going to put it and keep it in short-term memory, uh, you want it there as, as close to the exam as possible because, again, short-term memory has a very fast decay rate. So if you put it in short-term memory as close to the exam as possible, uh, you have, the uh, I think, the highest, uh, the highest chance of doing well on that section. Uh, so there we go. That's about all I can uh, offer is just uh, how you want to prioritize. Uh, and, uh, again, I can't stress this enough. 
There are no shortcuts. There's no magic bullet. There's no supplement you can take, no matter what anybody's trying to sell you online. Crash courses, pass guarantee, that doesn't work. Nobody can guarantee you that you're going to pass unless they can unless they can stand beside you the whole time and make you put in the time. That's the only that's the only way it can be done. So, you're your own police uh, on this one. Putting in the time.